How many is excited to be in God's house today? Yeah, you're in the right place today. For the ones that I haven't met, my name is Pastor Robert. I'm the associate pastor. Uh, my brother, he's a senior pastor. And like I said during the prayer, he's actually at our new Pomona campus. Can you give it up for our Pomona campus? Man, they're tearing it up. Pastor Chris and the team. Um, Pastor Marco is going to deliver the word. Then they got a big carnival set up for the kids out there. And then Pomona campus as well. Tonight, they'll be joining us for the drama. How many seen the drama last week? You were with us last. Wasn't that great? Um, how many have not seen it? Put it that way. How many have not seen it? You got to make it tonight. It's going to be good. It is the last showing of the drama. Um, it's a great drama to invite friends, invite family. Um, we were on the streets yesterday. Um, can you put up that picture of Esteban? Me and my son were on the streets yesterday, and we were passing out flyers, and, and we went to an apartment complex, and all the door hangers were gone. Everything was gone. We're heading back home, and then my son looks at the passenger door, and my son wasn't feeling well, and I told him, come on, let's just go out for a few minutes. So he looks in, in our door, and we had another 20 flyers. And he goes, look, look Dad, we got another 20 flyers. I was tired. I wanted to go home. Okay. Right? I, I'm, not, I'm not all spiritual all the time. I want to go home. I was tired, right? And, I, I, right? and he, goes, he goes, Dad, these are going to be trash after tomorrow because it has a date on it for today. It's going to be trash. And when he said that, I said, oh, my gosh, we got to give these things out then. So we stopped at a bus stop, and we taped it on a bus stop. And I taped like four or five, put them on cars. Was a lady getting her car done. We, we witnessed to her, prayed with her. And then this guy here, Esteban, he passes us up, and he was on his bike, and he was tired, and he's just staring at us, you know, putting flyers up at the bus, bus stop. I'm taping stuff. I grabbed the gorilla tape out of my car. I said, Son, grab that gorilla tape. Make sure these flyers don't go anywhere. And this guy, Esteban, he's just watching us, right? He's tired. He's breathing heavy. He's riding his bike. And I'm about to go to the car. And God says, what are you doing? Go talk to his step on. Well, I didn't know his name yet, but go talk to the guy in the bike. He's staring right at you. And I look up. He's looking at me, breathing heavy. And we go over there. I said, what's up, man? What's your name? He tells me a step on. I give him a flyer. And he goes, the way rolled outreach. I'm trying to get into your men's home right now. And he said, man, I'm just strung out on drugs. I need help. I said, well, let's try to get you in the home. But, but before that, how about we just surrender your life to God right now? I said, God could set you free from drugs right here in the corner in front of the old 7-Eleven right here. And right there, Esteban gave his life to Jesus Christ. He surrendered to God. Um, why, did, why do I share that story? Because, guys, we have friends. We have family. Um, you know, these dramas and, you know, even church, period. Time is running out. Time is running out. We're all, we're, we're, we're like a clock. One day we're going to be here and the clock is ticking and one second we're going to be gone. So our family and friends, they need Jesus fast. And not even, yeah, they, they are, they're experienced death, but then even more so the enemy will get a grip on our family and friends. How many has ever been gripped by the enemy at one point in your life? Addicted to drugs, just strung out, messed up. So get your family, get your friends here tonight at 6. It'll be our last show of the drama. And then Kids World, they're going to have a great, give it up for Kids World. They do a great job here. They got a big carnival set up over there and a bunch of truckloads of candy. But greater than candy and greater than even, they're going to have some game booths. Our kids are going to experience Jesus tonight. How many are in love with Jesus? Anybody, anybody in love with, anybody radical? Any radical folks out there in love with Jesus? So more important than the candy and the carnival. It's going to be fun, but they're also going to experience Jesus. So come on out tonight at 6 o'clock. Um, invite everybody you know. All right, if you can, turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. Um, I won't be before you long. You know, we got a 1 o'clock service after this, and then tonight getting ready for the drama. But God gave me a word. It's really, it's a warning, if I could say that. I mean, as a pastor, I'm here to encourage. We are here to equip. But also as a pastor, we're here to prepare you. To prepare you for what's coming. Prepare you to equip you for ministry. To equip you for the battles. And as I was studying the last couple of days, the Lord gave me this word. It was really impressed on my heart. Pastor Marco was actually speaking the same message at our Pomona campus. I shared it with him last night. He said, that's the word. That's it right there. Look at Genesis chapter 4 verse 7. And then I'll give you the title. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. You will be accepted if you do what is right. 
just a re- really quick, if you, if you haven't read the scriptures, man, what are you reading? It's a story between two brothers, Cain and Abel. They decide to bring a gift to the Lord. Cain brings a gift, a sacrifice to God. His brother Abel brings a gift. God accepts his brother's gift, Abel, but doesn't accept Cain's gift. So Cain is mad. He's mad at his brother, and he's mad at God. How many have ever been mad at somebody before? How many mad at somebody today? All right, we'll pray. We'll, we'll, we'll do some prayer later. So Cain was mad. He's furiated. He's mad at his brother. He's got all these thoughts running through his head. So God comes to him and said, you'll be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, watch out, Cain. Sin is crouching at the door. Sin is knocking at your door. The enemy is knocking at our doors. Compromise is knocking at our doors. Watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. Here's the title. Write it down. Don't open the door. Turn to five people and tell them, don't open the door. Tell them whatever you do, don't open the door. Tell the person behind you, you too, don't open it. The devil is slick. The devil is slick. I was sharing the message of Pastor Mark. He said, man, the devil doesn't even, doesn't even need a door open. All he needs is a little crack to enter our lives. The devil's like water. Isn't water crazy? You, 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 have, you have a rainstorm and something happens and somehow water finds its way in your house. Because all the water needs is a little crack to enter. So this is a message of warning. This is a message to close the doors that we've opened on or we've allowed the enemy to come in. See, the enemy is crouching at our doors looking for any access points. I want you to write that down. The enemy is crouching at our doors. He's crouching by our families. He's crouching by our children. He's crouching there looking for any access points. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 says this, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The enemy is always looking for the weakest target, the weakest link. He's looking to see how he can access into our lives. He's looking for an access point. I remember years back, we were going through some warfare, me and my family, and my wife, she gets visions more than me. Um, usually at night, I just sleep. She sleeps good too, but I just, I just sleep. But one night she wakes me up. This was years back probably. Gosh, it was really when we first started the church, about 15, 16 years ago. We were living out in Redlands, and we were there, And she wakes me up like 2 o'clock in the morning. She, man, pray, pray, pray. I said, what's going on? She said, I just seen our house right now. I seen a bunch of demons trying to get into our home. I seen them like little ants. You ever see like an ant hill where they're just kind of climbing on top of each other? She goes, Robert, that's what I just saw above our, our, our house here, above our room. And they're trying to get in. She said, but I said, well, did any of them get in? She was freaking me out at that point. She goes, no, 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 none of them got in. I said, well, what's stopping them? She said, there's a, there's, a, there's a ring of fire around our house right now. And every time they touch the fire, they got to leave. They, they touch the fire, they got to go. And when I, we started to pray, but that day and that week, I said, okay, is there any entry points where the devil can enter? Because the devil is walking and he's prowling to see where he could get in. Job describes it this way. Look at Job chapter 1, verse 7. Interesting scripture. This is Old Testament. God and the angels are having this big board meeting, having a meeting. They're talking, discussing strategy, and they're there. And Lucifer shows up to this meeting. Job chapter 1, verse 7. This is after Lucifer gets kicked out of heaven, of course. And he decides to come up to this meeting. Look what happens. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan, what what are you doing here? What's what's going on? Satan answered the Lord, I've been been patrolling the earth 
watching everything that goes on. He's patrolling the earth. He's patrolling neighborhoods. He's patrolling our families. And what is he out to do? What is the enemy's purpose? It's very clear. His purpose is found in John 10, 10. Here's the purpose. Why is he prowling? Why is he trying to attack our children? Why is he trying to attack our marriages? Why is the enemy attacking my mind? Why is he doing this? Here's his purpose. It's very clear. John 10, 10. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy but my purpose, Jesus' purpose, is to give a rich and satisfying life. The devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy. And what he's looking for is access points, areas in our life where he's able to enter. And according to stats, the enemy is accomplishing a lot of his goals. What is the enemy goals again? Steal, kill, and destroy. What is the enemy's goals? And he succeeded in, in, in a lot of areas. How do I know that? Looking at some of the stats. Over 400,000 kids right now across America are in our foster care system. The double is succeeding in a lot of families. He's destroying, not annihilating families. We just adopted... A foster daughter into our home. She's one of our, she was one of our members of the youth group. She was going from foster home to foster home to foster home. And finally at her fifth home, you know, she became friends with my daughter. She starts calling my daughter, tell your parents if I could just go with them. <laughs> can't do this no more. I think she was 14 and we took her in or something. She, I can't do this anymore. Because she would literally go for a house for six months and they'd, she'd go to another home. Because a lot of the homes, you know, some people do it for money. I'm not saying, some people do it for that, right? And she was going from home to home. She would call us and call us. I said, that's enough. I said, Mariah, tell your friend, whatever we got to do, we're taking her into the house. So we fostered her into our family. But she comes from a broken family. The enemy in a lot of areas, he succeeded over 400,000 kids. I told Janet the other day, I said, man, can we start a foster home here? I just want to grab like 20 of these kids and put them into a home. I know they used to call them like group homes back in the day. I don't know what you call it. Start it. I told Janice, I was like, start it. I can't allow kids to be just torn apart. See, this message here, we're, we're, we're drawing the line right now. We're letting the enemy know we're going to close all entry points. We're going to close the doors on the enemy. How do I know the enemy is succeeding in a lot of areas? 400,000 kids are in foster care. Look at this one. Every nine minutes, CPS finds evidence of child sexual abuse. Every nine minutes, CPS finds evidence for child sexual abuse. Every nine minutes in America. Marriages, 50 to 60% are ending in divorce. 15 million people are addicted to alcohol. 1.4 million suicide attempts in 2019. In a lot of areas, the enemy is succeeding. We've allowed an entry point, and he comes in. The other day, I'll confess. Can I confess my sins to you? This, this releases me, so I'm going to do it anyways. The other day, I was watching a movie, and I won't say what kind of movie, but it was a Halloween. Oh, yeah, it's a Halloween movie, I'll tell you that. All right? I love a good scare. Yeah. If I wasn't saved, I would hang out at Six Flags right now, Knott's Berry Farm. I, I like a good scare. I like to be freaked out once in a while. That's my downside. I like, to be, I like to be scared. No one scare me now. Don't go to my house and scare me tonight. Which it is weird. Somebody's been putting like these little knolls in front of my house lately. They're scary. I told another topic. Okay, let's move on. Okay, hold on. Scary. <laughs> so we watched a movie, right? And kids started watching it, whatever. And my son Noah, days pass, the movie's done, whatever, not a big deal. Hey, you guys, devil's very subtle. Oh, well, can he enter my house through a movie? Come on, Rob. You're being too religious. You're being too fanatic on me now. Well, a week, a week goes by, and my son's playing. He know, he's learning how to play the piano. And Chris Dunn, a great teacher, is teaching my boy. And so the other day, we're at home. It's kind of right before bed. I hear one of the songs that was on the movie. 
And I'm like, ooh. I thought my kids turned on the movie. Shut off the movie. We're getting, getting rid of the bed. Shut all that stuff off. We shouldn't have watched that in the first place. Turn it off. I go downstairs. It's my son playing the song. I said, son, we're playing that song. We bought that keyboard to do worship music. It brought like this eerie feeling in, my, in our downstairs area. I said, shut that thing off. I said, play worship music. Do you know a worship song is a little bit? I said, play it. Because I know God it happens to praise some of his people. Play some worship music. So for the last few days in my house, I've been blasting worship music. Very subtle. Gets in his mind. This song is okay. Let me just play it for the house right now. Be careful. Movies, music, be careful. The devil can enter. He's just looking for a little small crack. We don't start off committing adultery, right? We start off by flirting with the girl at work. She starts massaging me. Oh, that feels good. Go ahead. Does your wife massage you? No, she doesn't massage me. And you're in the break room eating a peanut butter jelly sandwich and the girl's massaging your back. Just a little crack. Social media is good, but it could be very dangerous right now. Can we play this clip? I think we're going to play it. We're going to play it. It's one minute, two minute. Look at this clip of TikTok right now. Teen girls across America right now are being rushed to our local hospitals. It's all over the news. Go on YouTube today. You'll probably, if you, if you watch 10 o'clock news, it'll be on the news tonight because it's all over. Hey, Way fam, that video that Pastor Rob is talking about right now during service is something that we are all very familiar with. We have to be mindful of the words we are listening to, the music we're listening to, the TV that we're watching, even the little clips. And this video specifically that Pastor Rob is talking about is TikTok and the effect it's taking on young teenage girls. So it's showing how with one video, these girls start going down a rabbit hole through a hashtag or through a song that's playing in the background. And they're able to see all the videos that are related to that one topic. And we have all been there before, Wave Fam. We've all started to go down a rabbit hole. We've all started to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And we're thinking, it's not a big deal. It's just a five second video. It's just a 10 second video. But we have to watch what exactly we think is not a big deal. What are we letting into our spirit? What are we letting into our heart? What are we laying into our home when we're just opening that small window? The devil doesn't need a large grand opportunity to enter our hearts, to enter our family, to take over in our lives. He just needs a little opportunity. And with that little opportunity, he sneaks his way in and it can be through these videos. So the reporters talk about how these girls are watching this video and you know the video says like, I'm so depressed and so does the next video and so does the next video and so on and so forth. That eventually the consumer who's watching it starts to feel I'm so depressed and starts to engage and behave in the way they saw in these videos. And it all started when they watched one five second video and chose to go deeper. So I just want to let us be mindful right now, Wayfam, and even with our kids, our nephews, our nieces, our siblings, whoever it is that's around us, we have to remember it is the slightest opportunity for the devil to come in and make it his home. And we want to cut all that off. We want to close those doors. We want to seal them up tight. We want to guard our hearts with the word of God. Everything we listen to, everything we pay our mind to, everything we give a chance to should all be to glorify God. And if it's not glorifying God, if it eventually doesn't glorify God, somewhere along the lines, we have let the door open and we need to not be doing that. And it talks about the very famous social media platform, TikTok. We all think it's just fun and games, it's just videos, it's just clips, it's just voiceovers. But the problem is it's not just anything. It is a door opening. 
it can be a video it can be a song it could be someone singing but it's not just something and right now we're gonna get back into service parents i'm guilty of this my kids have cell phones and we do our best to limit it limit the time on there but sometimes our kids will sneak off to the bedroom watching a video for hours what are they doing where are they at what's going on where, where, where are they at? We're getting upstairs get them downstairs right now how many know parents we are the watchmen of our homes we are the watchmen of our community we are the watchmen of our families don't open the door i want to give you a few more practical areas how the enemy knocks and how he enters write these things down we just discussed social media for a little bit let me give you a few more how does the enemy knock how does the enemy enter our lives, into our families, into our homes? Number one, write this down. He will enter through our words and conversations. The enemy will knock and he will enter through our words and our conversations. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 18, 21, words can bring death or life. They can bring. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? They could bring. So it's like your tongues have like spiritual arms. Whatever we speak, it brings it in. It brings it in. I've said this before. Man, it feels like I'm coming down with a cold. How many have ever said that? Right? Instead of, instead of saying in your head, Jesus right now, I bind this cold that's trying to attack my body right now. I bind this little inflammation in my nose and my head. Take it from me right now because by your stripes I'm healed. I don't receive a cold right now and I bind that cold and that flu off my body. Right? The words that we say, they're either attracting the kingdom of God or they're attracting the kingdom of Satan. Please write that down. Every word that we say. They either attract the kingdom of God or they attract the kingdom of Satan. There's power and death and life in the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21 CV says this, words can bring death. They can bring death. They could bring life. Talk too much and you will eat everything you say. Some of us might just have to talk a whole lot less. Because every word that we say is complaining about this and complaining about that. And God is saying, look, there's death and life in your tongue. Do you want to see life in this situation? Or do you want to see death in this situation? It's up to you. But the enemy will knock and he'll enter through our words and through our conversations. Gossiping about someone. Gossiping about so-and-so. Have you seen so-and-so? And see, well, the I don't want to attract the kingdom of the enemy. I want to attract the kingdom of God. How many want to attract the kingdom of God? Wherever you, where you go, people are getting saved. You're seeing life. You're seeing people get healed. Watch your words. Look at your neighbor and tell them, watch your words. How does the enemy knock? How does he enter through our words conversation? Number three, through rebellion. He will enter through rebellion. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Wow. So not obeying God, not obeying his word, not obeying the leadership God has put ahead of you, not obeying the things of God, it's as the sin of witchcraft. That blows my mind. So somebody that worships Satan, it's the same thing as rebelling against God or leadership. That's scary. <laughs> Talk about a Halloween scare. Don't tell me what to do. I ain't going to no starting that the way. I can read the Bible myself in my house. Holy Spirit speaks to me. I had a guy tell me that years back. He said, I don't need none of your classes. I said, you're right, you don't. And he goes, I was just agreeing with him. He was just talking. I said, what's going on? He's like, Holy Spirit speaks to me. I said, he does, huh? I said, what church you go to? Oh, I, I don't, I'm not planted in no church. 
I said, sir, you're under a spirit of deception. You don't even know it right now. <laughs> the body of Christ, we're one body. We learn from one another. As soon as we rebel against God, his word, and leadership, we join with the forces of the enemy. That's why Lucifer gets kicked out of heaven. He was rebelling against God. I got this. I could do this better than God. Come on, angels. We could do this better than him. I could do this and I could do that. And God says, because of your rebellion, because of your pride, you must leave. And one third of the angels that's listening to you got to leave heaven right now. Rebellion, write this down. Rebellion will remove you from the presence of God. Rebellion will remove you from the presence of God, just like Lucifer and all the angels that followed him. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because, look at the scripture, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. That's rebellion. Rejecting the word of the Lord. He also rejects you from being king. When we rebel against God in leadership, like I said, we join forces now with the enemy. Don't allow rebellion to sleep, sink in. Don't allow your kids to, to sink in. There's times my kids go to school. I like to give you guys examples of what I go through. Once in a while, my kids will come on, this teacher is mean, and you need to talk to this teacher or whatever, and he gave me a C. I said, man, you got a C because you ain't studying. Don't ever come in this house blaming your teacher why you got a C. You got a C because you're just lazy. Because if I automatically take my kid's side on the teacher that the teacher don't like him, I'm teaching my kid to rebel against authority. So my kids, no, now don't, don't come with me with that business. But I tell my kids, go to your kids, go to your teacher, say, teacher, I'm sorry for having a C because I'm lazy. I'm sorry for having a C because I don't like to study. I, I don't like to study. Keep on teaching me. And I have my kids say sorry to the teacher. You know why? I'm trying to train my kids. Rebellion is not allowed here. We respect and honor authority. And ain't old-fashioned whooping. Give your kid a whooping. I'm just kidding. Anybody still believe in whoopings? Oh, hallelujah. I'm in the right church. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We can whoop our kids again. Get that old-fashioned belt out and whoop them. Whoop that C out of them. Whoop that rebellion out of them. How many were raised, your mommy and daddy talking, they just grab whatever they can just slap you with it. If it's a shoe, slap you with a shoe. If it's an iron pant, no, it's not iron pants, no. That's abuse, no iron pants. That's abuse. <laughs> Old-fashioned whooping. Okay, let's keep on going. Glory be to God. We're in a whooping church. All right, I like this. I like this. Let me see if you guys are learning. How does the enemy, according to your notes that you're jotting down, how does the enemy knock and enter, number one? Number two, how does he enter? Here's number three. We're going to go a little faster for sake of time. Through the practice of demonic activities quickest way to activate demons sometimes practice of demonic activities for example fortune telling Ouija boards calling on the dead tarot cards hand reading sexual perversion activities celebrating Halloween like the world celebrates Halloween that's why we have an alternative tonight if you think I'm foolish on what the enemy is trying to do tonight in this world, I've talked to ex-witches. John Ramirez is one of them. I've talked to ex-witches. What are you guys doing Halloween night? He goes, man, that's our revival night. That's when Lucifer, throughout the year, he comes in physical form and comes to our homes and comes to our worship services. This is the night we sacrifice kids and sacrifice animals. This is the night where witches begin spells all over cities and all over communities. And this is our night. Well, not anymore on 4680 Hallmark Parkway. We're going to save souls tonight. But be careful.
careful. Don't choose tonight to dress up your kid as Freddy Krueger instead of coming to church tonight. Be careful. Be careful. Devil is subtle. Our kids are running around with the, with the Freddy Krueger mask all night with his nails cutting people. This is so cute. Let me take a picture. It is cute. But very dangerous. Michael Myers. Michael Myers. What does he represent? Death. Murder. Anger. What does that stuff represent? Be careful. Practicing some of the things of the enemy Man, he will enter our homes. He will enter your kids as fast as he can. Close the door. Look at your neighbor and tell him, close the door. Well, pastor, does the Bible talk about Ouija boards and fortune telling? That's not in the Bible. Yes, it is. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 18. Highlight this thing. Show all your friends tonight. Deuteronomy 18, 9. When you enter the land your God has given you, be very careful not to imitate. Be very careful not to imitate. Be very careful not to imitate the detestable customs of the nations living there. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. I, we do not practice the things of the world. We practice the things of the kingdom. We practice the things of God. Be careful. Don't imitate the things of this world. For example... Never sacrifice your son or daughter as a burnt offering. Do not let your people set practice fortune telling. There it goes. Told you it was in the Bible. Or use sorcery, interpret omens, omens, or engage in witchcraft, cast spells, or function as mediums, or psychics, or call forth the spirits of the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Pastor, psychic. Let me give you a newsflash. When you, you go see a psychic, you're not talking to just a person alone. You're having a time with a demon. Oh, come on, Pat. How could it be a demon? They told me my whole, my, told me my whole past. They told me what happened in 1979. Well, of course they know what happened in 1979. The demons know your past better than you. They were sitting right there where you were at the club. They were sitting right there when you were getting high. They have details you can't even imagine. The Bible is saying those are detestable things. Stay away from mediums. Stay away from psychics. Stay away from calling forth the dead. I know Dia de los Muertos is coming up. I know. I watched that movie. What is it? That cute movie? Huh? Loco. Cute movie, right? <laughs> Very subtle. Let me call upon the dead during Halloween throughout the year. I want to see my mom again. I want to see my dad. I want to see my uncle. You guys, when you call upon the dead, you say, Pastor, I've seen my, I've seen my great uncle that passed away a couple years ago. You didn't see your great uncle. You just seen a demon. You did not see Grandpa Joe. You just saw a demon talking to you. How do I know the dead doesn't come back? Write this down. The dead's gone. They're in heaven or they're in hell. Where does the dead go? Heaven or hell? Where does the dead go? Where does the dead go? They don't come back up. Look at the scripture. Let me prove it. Job 7, 9, and 10. As the cloud disappears and vanishes away, so he who goes down to the grave does not come up. They go down to the grave. They don't come up. He shall never return to his house. He shall never return in your home. Nor shall this place know him anymore. So the dead is there. They do not come back to life. Do not play with the dead and think it's, well, I just want to talk to my ancestor here and talk to my ancestor here. You're opening the door to the demonic realm. Be careful. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't open the door. No, tell them like this, don't open it. Now, you guys are, no, no, tell me, don't open the door. Okay, a few of you guys did. You guys got it. I'm telling you because it's, it's dangerous. 
Number four, and we're done. We're going to have some time of prayer. How does the enemy come in? How does he knock? Through unforgiveness. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. If you forgive anything, anyone, anything. I'm reading out the Amplified. I don't know if they ever got the CB, CV or CSB version. It might look a little different. I too forgive that one. And what I've forgiven, I've forgiven anything. Has been for your sake in the presence of of and with the approval of Christ. Look at this, verse 11. To keep Satan from taking advantage of us. When we don't forgive, write this down, the enemy has access to take advantage of you. He has access to lead you. Ivan, or Evangelist Tate, he said it, he said it 100% right. When you have unforgiveness, you are now allowing the devil to be your pastor. Because at that point now, when we have resentment, we don't let it go, the enemy begins to lead us, he begins to guide us. Ephesians 4.27 says this way, don't give, in, don't give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by how? Holding the grudge, nurturing anger, harboring resentment, and cultivating bitterness. When we cultivate bitterness, we cultivate anger, we cultivate unforgiveness, we give the enemy access to lead us and guide us. So now these doors that we've opened for sake of time, what do we do now? We've opened up doors. The enemy maybe has entered our houses, families, and like, whoa, what's going on here? Kids are acting up, what's going on? Divorce is happening in the house now. We're looking at divorce, what do I do? Here's the first thing. Let's just ask Jesus to forgive us for opening all these wrong doors. Does that sound like a plan today? So write that down. What's the action plan? Let's ask Jesus just to forgive us. Forgive me for opening that door. Forgive me for allowing that spirit to enter my house. Forgive me for that conversation that I had. Forgive me for gossiping about my family and friends. Forgive me for that anger. Forgive me for that unforgiveness. I let that person go. I let it go. Let's ask God to forgive us for opening those doors. Number two, let's close off all the entry points. Cut them off. Close off all the entry points. Cut off all the things that lead to sin. If you got to cut off a friend, cut off a friend. If you got to cut off internet, cut off internet. Whatever you got to do, cut it off. And number three, let's invite Jesus into our lives now. I just went through the action plan fast for time. Let's cut off some things. Some of us need to cut off some things. Some of us are still shacking up with our boyfriend or girlfriend. Let's cut it off. It's time to move out until you get married. It's time not to have sex until you get married. I got one clap. I'll take it. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. I'll take it. Yeah. If I got one person that believes in that, glory be to God. I forgot I'm in a spanking church. Glory be to God. Pastor, you're old school. Not old school. I'm the Bible. Bible says don't do it. Don't do it. Bible says close that door. Close that door. You guys got it? How many got this? You guys getting it? Let's all stand up, you guys. I want to ask that nobody leave at this time, please. It just causes a lot of distraction at times unless you got to go. You're a doctor. You got to go do surgery. Go do surgery. Go, 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 go. Okay. Or if you really got to go to work, of course. If you got to go to work, go. Don't have to go to work, please. Hang on for two minutes. We're done. Tonight, you guys, I can't reemphasize enough the drama. Bring people. Bring people. Bring people. Get your aunt down here tonight. Get your uncle down here tonight. Get nephew Johnny down here tonight. Get him off that Michael Myers mask. Get him in church tonight. I see a lot of young adults. I'm going to end on this. The Holy Spirit just told me something right now. I've seen some young adults. Some of you guys were planning to go to a, a party tonight, Halloween party. I just heard it. Whatever you do, don't go. This is a warning. There's going to be demons there waiting for you to get to that party. And when you leave that party, you're walking out about 20, 30 demons. Don't do it tonight. So, Pastor, what do I do? I always go to Halloween party. We're going to have a party here. We're going to have fun. 
The drama is amazing. Isn't the drama amazing? For the ones that have seen it, get, get people here. Calm, don't do it. Don't open that door. Like, don't open it. Danger zone, man. Danger. Here we go. We're going to end with prayer today. Here's the first thing. You're saying, Pastor, man, this message is hitting me like a ton of bricks right now. I've opened some doors. I have allowed some entry points with my kids, my family, my marriage, whatever. I have some doors open. I need to close them. I know where this is headed. I need to shut that door before this gets really crazy. You know who you are. Just, God's been speaking. Your heart's like pound, like shut that door, shut that door, close that door. Don't go to that door. Shut that door. Right? God's talking to you. Don't leave here before we just pray for you for a second. Just to get your mind in order, to get your spirit ready. So when you walk out those doors, you're ready. Okay? So if this message has touched you, you want to close some doors. You know you got doors open. You want to close them. In a moment when I say three, I want you to raise your hands. Okay? You guys got it? Message touched you. You need to close some doors. When I say three, you're going to go like this. What are you going to do? Right here. Here's the second group. You don't know Jesus as your Savior. Please listen. If you don't hear nothing else, listen right now. I'm going to ask you a very important question. If you were to die today, where are you going? If you die today, where are you going? Are you going to heaven? Pastor, I thought everybody goes to heaven. It's not what the Bible teaches. There's a real heaven and there's a real hell. Pastor, who goes to hell? All those who reject Christ. All those who say no to Christ. All those who say, no, I don't want Jesus. Not now. Not, I don't want Jesus. I don't want him. Those are the ones that go to hell. What's hell? Lake of fire. Separation from God for eternity. No friends, no party. There's nothing there. Heat, misery, where the dormants, where the demons torment you night and day. It's horrific. Pastor, I don't want to go there. I need to get right with God. I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior. I, I, I've committed sins, man. I want God to forgive me. I want to get right. Here we go. I'm going to count to three. It's two groups now. I'm going to raise your hands. One, I got a lot of open doors. I got one open door, Pastor. I need to close them. I've opened them, and I need to repent, ask God forgiveness for opening those doors. Number two, Pastor, I want Jesus. I want Jesus to forgive me of all my sins. I want to make sure if I died today, I would go straight to heaven. That's me. On a count of three, raise your hands on the cross auditorium. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. Raise them, raise them, raise them. Raise them, raise them, raise them. I see hands here, hands there, hands there. Raise them, raise them, raise them, raise them. Here we go. See hand over there, hand over there, hand over there, hand over there. Hand back there. Here we go. See those hands. Great job, great job. All those just raised your hands. I want you to come up. Come meet me here in the front. We're going to lead you in a prayer of salvation today. And close all these doors on the devil. Come, 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 come. Seventy-one, seventy-two, seventy-three, seventy-four, seventy-five, seventy-six, seventy-seven. You coming down, sweetie? Seventy-eight, seventy-eight people, seventy-eight people. I might have lost count. I'm not sure. Seventy-nine, eighty, eighty-one, eighty-two. I know there's two groups up here. I know there's two groups. Number one, you're saying I've opened doors. I need to close them. I get it. We're gonna close them right now. We're gonna ask God to forgive us for opening those doors of destruction. 
maybe bringing in detestable things in our homes. Then the second group, you're saying, I need Jesus. I'm not right with God. I need God now. If I die today, I don't know where I'm going. A couple other people came. We got close to 90 people up here. Give Jesus a shout of praise. It's powerful. Every head bow, every eyes close. We might need a few more leaders to help. Might have, yeah, we need a lot more leaders. Yeah, we got a whole guy out here. I see Julie here. We still have a group here. Need help. P12 leaders. Maybe you're a ministry leader. Come down here. Pray for people. Get information. Got a lot of people right here in the middle. Any help? Tonight, you guys, drama. Don't miss. It's going to be good. Invite some friends. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. I choose today to let go of the world and follow you. I am a disciple. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus, forgive me for opening those wrong doors. Shut those doors. Holy Spirit, fill me. Set me free. All bad habits, all addictions. I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.